All right, everybody, how you doing? It's Mr. Nordhausen coming to you live from my office here at the Leroy Central School District. Um, we're going to be working again on some contest snare drum solos. Uh, this one in particular is called Three Ply. It is from the Southern Special uh, Drum Solos book by William Shinstein. Uh, and what a, uh, what, what a prolific composer. Um, I want to say he wrote over like 30 different percussion books, lots of solos, educational materials. Uh, he was a local guy, sort of, because he attended the Eastman School of Music right here in Rochester. Um, and he, uh, whatchamacallit, he played with the RPO, the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra. He's played with uh, some other orchestras as well, nationally known. Uh, but otherwise, he was a 30-year public school teacher in Pennsylvania and just uh, a man that wanted to share his love of drumming and his knowledge of drumming and music with as many people possible. And what better way to do that than not only through uh, direct hand-to-hand -hand teaching with students like he did for so many years, but by getting his works out there to live on forever. So very grateful that, uh, that he took the time to write all this stuff out. This solo here, again, called Three Ply, this is a NISMA, New York State School Music Association, level three solo out of six levels. So we're getting into that middle territory here, and we're going to start picking up some additional rudiments. Um, in the particular, this solo has flams, five-stroke rolls, nine-stroke rolls, uh, flam accents. Um, what else? 13-stroke uh, rolls drags, 17 stroke rolls. We don't have any paradiddles or unique sticking opportunities like that, but certainly a, a plethora of rudiments for us to go through here. There's a lot of dynamics in this piece that are present. There are some repeats, uh, in fact, a lot of repeats, uh, A to B repeats, B to C repeats, C to D repeats, D to E repeats. So there are plenty of repeats that you need to be aware of and watch out for and obviously uh, do. And then like I said, the dynamics and accents and things of that nature as well. As I've said in all of my instructional videos, this one included, when you're first learning to play a snare drum solo, keep it simple, okay? Take out the rudiments, ignore the dynamics. Here's a music teacher telling you to ignore dynamics, right? Whoa, crazy, but I'm telling you, ignore all of those things simplify those things, eliminate those things, and focus on the rhythm. Once you've mastered the rhythm, slowly, methodically scaffold those things back into the performance. So maybe um, my first thing that I like to tell my students to do is start adding the rolls back in. So for example, this very first measure goes flam, five-stroke roll, flam, nine-stroke roll. Okay, it, counting wise, rhythmically, it's one and a two and three E and a one. So you would play that. You would not bounce your sticks. You'd play this. Okay? Now, as written, if I were to bounce it, it would be this, which is the same rhythm. One and a two and three E and a one. But when I'm just learning it, when I'm just teaching it, I'm going to get rid of the bounce strokes and just play the 16th note underpinning rhythm of the roll. Hope that makes sense. Um, and then after I master that, I'll go back through and I'll put those bounce strokes in. And then maybe I'll put the flams in. Maybe I'll put the drags in. Then maybe I'll do dynamics. Uh, then, you know, repeats. Then I'll slowly increase the speed, okay? And so uh, I find that methodical way of doing things to be uh, very, very productive. And so I highly recommend you do that as well. Um, and there we go. So what I'm going to do now is just that. I'm going to simplify. I'm going to take all of these things out. No repeats, no dynamics, no flams, no drags, no rolls, etc. I'm just going to play the rhythm. And a solo like this, it doesn't have a metronomic marking at the top of the page, but NISMA level three and four solos generally land in that quarter note equals 120-ish uh, area. So that's eventually where we're going to get to. But for right now, I'm going to put the quarter note at 80 on the metronome, and I'm going to play this again just rhythmically 
at quarter note equals 80. And we're back after hitting the metronome there. That's quarter note equals 80. So here's my quarter note. One, two, three, eighth notes. One, and two, and three, and sixteenth notes. One, and two, and three, and okay? So here we go. Quarter note equals 80. This is just rhythmically. One, and two, and three, and ready, and go. throw them all in right now for the sake of time of course okay one and two and three and one and two and three and <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, I hope this video was helpful. And uh, if you are successfully doing all these things and you're ready to increase the tempo, then check out my performance video where we take it up to quarter note equals 120. All right, see you later.